words, my mouth and the meditation of my heart be to the greater honor and glory of God. Amen. So Lydia can testify that I have had this lifelong dream to someday build a log cabin and have this nice pond behind it where I can go out and fish whenever I want. And I have, you know, I have a, a, a like a horse tank full of water and an aerator. So if I go out and I fish maybe one or two and I'm feeling lazy, I can just throw the fish into the tank and then when I get enough to and I'm not feel lazy, I can clean them at my own leisure. And so but I realize the older I get, the more that dream is maybe not so likely. But then the old saying is never say never. So who knows? <laughs> Lydia and I have owned three houses in our lifetime, or let's say we've had mortgages on three houses <laughs> in our lifetime. And but the idea of building a house from scratch is is an awesome idea, you know, of, of you know, because every house we've ever lived in has had some something about it that we just didn't like, but didn't were cheap enough we didn't want to spend the money to change it and make it right. So it would be nice, you know, if uh, HGTV were to show up and um, and help us to plan out and help us build, you know, our dream home. And they have you when we watch HGTV. You know, they have all these wonderful ideas. Wow, I'd love to have that in my new house. And, or I'd love to have that kitchen or that bathroom or that bedroom. But then you get discouraged when they show you what the cost of uh, that is going to be. Jesus, as Jesus of Nazareth, was, as we know from the Gospels, he was Joseph's son and he was a carpenter. So Jesus of Nazareth could probably build a house from scratch. But then we have the other Jesus, who is Jesus, uh, who is the Christ, who is the Son of God. He has bigger plans and bigger builds. His idea and the whole reason for him coming uh, from heaven's work was to build a kingdom. Paul in the Corinthians, uh, in his letter to the Corinthians, says, In Christ there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. And then in the book of Revelation, we hear that there will eventually, when Jesus comes back, be a new heaven and a new earth, which is coming. Jesus stresses that, that, the, but that the kingdom that he is thinking about needs to be built in the here and the now, right now. Now, the foundation of this kingdom that Jesus came down to build is built on the law of the prophets, as he says. And that the cornerstone is, he's, it's not, a, he's, he's some things he's hanging on to. That he's saying that the cornerstone of this will be uh, to love God, love your neighbor, and to, as you love yourself. In last week's gospel and today's readings, is. I see a blueprint of what that kingdom will look like. And it's not what we think. Last week, if you weren't here, uh, there was some Pharisees and scribes went to Jesus and his disciples and says, why aren't they eating with, why don't they wash their hands before uh, they eat, like the elders and the traditions? And so there was this teachings about what is and what is not clean. And Jesus basically says that everything that God has ever made is clean. So in this new kingdom that Jesus is building, uh, it goes back to creation, that in, in creation, God, when he was done, said everything is good. And so in this new build of the kingdom, everything will be good. Everything, nothing will be unclean. Be nice if our houses were that way now. <laughs> the second thing that's included in this new kingdom is inclusion of the Gentiles. And that comes from today's gospel that Jesus encounters, he's, he's off and, uh, on the edges in, in an area of Tyre and Sidon, and he uh, meets this Syrio Phoenician woman, 
uh, this Gentile woman, and she comes to Jesus begging to take the demon away from her daughter. And I'm not going to get really into that story, but that there is inclusion of all people into this new kingdom. If that, if that were not so, Jesus would not have taken his disciples uh, together before he ascended into heaven and said to them, I want you to go out into all nations of the world and make disciples and to, so that they can be included into this new kingdom that is being built. This is not necessarily a new thought of Jesus. Uh, God had given this thought to Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah who said that God's grace will be available to all and meaning the Gentiles. And I will note in the story that the, when Jesus says that the food should not be given to the dogs and the woman says even the dogs eat under the crumbs under the table, that this is not some wild dogs, uh, you know, that roam the streets. You know, this is the household pet. So there is kind of a, they're kind of a little jesting around between the woman and Jesus. But he does recognize her faith and makes it known that, and says to the people around, you know, that it's because of her faith that this demon is being cast out. And then thirdly, we have this, a follow-up story of this man who is mute uh, or is deaf and he speaks a little but you know you, you run across people who uh, they can't hear very well but they can speak a little bit but because they can't speak clearly because they can't hear clearly and so Jesus takes care of that but it's the, it's, we have to go back to that idea that in Jesus' day, that a man like that, the question would have been, what sin did he commit? Or whose sin? It was like the blind man who'd been born from birth, who Jesus gave sight to, that you know, who, who, who was it that sinned? Did he sin or his parents sin? Or what, what was it and that cursed him with this? Uh, with this issue of being deaf and partially mute. So in this new kingdom that Jesus is building, he's showing us that in this new kingdom there will be no illness, there will be no, no blind, there will be no, everybody will be healed and made new. All will be made well. Going back and looking at Proverbs in our reading today, it says the rich and the poor have one thing in common. The Lord is the maker of all of them. And so there will be a sense of equality in this new kingdom, that those who are generous will be blessed, but everybody will be generous in this new kingdom because they will be abundantly blessed by God and will be able to share that blessing. I've often heard it said, and Diane Stover says it a lot, that evangelism is one beggar showing another beggar where to find bread. And in the eyes of God, we're, we're all beggars, and we're, it's our responsibility to bring people and show them this new kingdom that Jesus is wanting to build. And then in the letter of James, we have something very similar, where he's showing that in this new kingdom of God, there will be no partiality, that we will all be equals in the sight of God. And in the here and now, in that kingdom, we have to show that same example. We cannot show partiality to one person or another based on their class or how they dress or so on. Because trust me, I get a whole lot more respect when I'm out walking around the clergy uh, as unless I'm in full camo and, and uh, my face is dirty with camo paint and all that. Uh, I get a whole different looks from that. <coughs> Lydia turned me on to a, a movie we watched together earlier uh, this week. It was on Netflix. Um, it may be available somewhere else, but it's called Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. And this is a, a woman that is based in like 1950s and uh, her husband has not returned from the war, from World War uh, II. And uh, to make ends meet, she's a house cleaner. 
and she they show her going to different houses, different classes of people. And there's one woman who, uh, while she refuses to pay this woman what she's owed, she uh, to keep up appearances, she's buying fancy clothes. And she goes into uh, her closet, and she sees that this woman has went to Paris and bought this one-of-a-kind Christian Dior dress. And she is so, she can just see that dress on herself. And she puts it up to her and looks at herself in the mirror. And she is bound and determined that she is going to get one of those dresses. So she is scrimping and she is saving. And, uh, and finally her husband is, uh, the army comes to her and says, we're finally able to say your husband is killed in action and you have this back pension. And she about falls out of her chair when she realizes how much this pension is. So now she has the money to go to Paris to get her own Christian Dior dress. And so she goes into this, this fancy dressmaking place. And because she just looks like a commoner and everybody around her is, you know, elitist, dressed to the hilt, that you know they think she's one of the cleaning ladies or looking for a you know a job as a seamstress or something and she's just dismissed out of hand and that's just there are examples after examples after examples you can go on the internet and find videos of people who have come in and even rich people who've been dressed in regular clothes have gone into these fancy stores and have been kicked out, and then have come back dressed up fancily, and oh, well, now things are different. God says, we want, I want none of that in my new kingdom. We are all the same. So Jesus, but Jesus makes it very clear in today's gospel that there will, because if we do show partiality, that there will be a judgment day. And that those, there will be some who will not be invited in to this new kingdom that he is building. Now, I don't expect, and but never say never, that HGTV is going to show up to my house or show up to any of your houses and say, oh, well, we're going to build you a brand new house to your specifications. But I know that Jesus is building a new kingdom, and that kingdom will be more than sufficient for myself and for 